So can we begin? Yes, Maharaj, we can start. We can, Maharaj. Okay. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Kyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namao Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Precharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Vayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare So we're studying Sri Ishopanishad at the level of Bhakti Shastri and this evening we're going to look at mantra number 10. Before we do so, we will just remember what happened in mantra 9 that we heard about people cultivating knowledge. There was two kinds of knowledge, Vidya and Avidya, right? And then we heard about the different kinds of miseducators. Maybe someone can remind us what were the names of these miseducators? How were they called? Yes. Vedavada Ratas, right, and Maya Aparita Gyanas. So someone will tell us, somebody else will tell us, what is a Vedavada Rata? What does this, what does this mean? What, uh, what are they doing? Maharaj, they are mistaken mundane educators. Yes. Yes, we said there's two kinds of mistaken mundane educators, the Vedavada Rata and Maya Aparita Jnana. So, what, what is the spe specific nature of the Vedavada Rata? Uh, they know the Vedas but don't know the purpose behind the Vedas. Okay. What do they think the purpose of the Vedas is? Krishna Maharaj. Huh? To know Krishna. No, but what do they think is the purpose behind the Vedas? They don't think the purpose is to know Krishna. Yeah, what? Uh, they, they think about going to heaven and enjoying material life. Right, yes, they think about going to heaven to enjoy material life. Right, they're thinking like that, sense gratification. But they speak, they mouth, they speak the Vedas, they recite the Vedas. And then someone else will tell us, Maya Aparita Jnana, what are they doing? Where did you hear about the Maya Aparita Jnana? And the people who have so much of rich, money, opulences, they declare themselves as a god. Is it Mariji? What were you going to say? Same thing, Marish. They, they accept the rich man as a god and they neglect the supreme lord. Okay. And they think the lord, god is Maya. They think god is Maya. Wh where is this term, Maya Aparita Jnana, from? Maharaji, do you remember? Where did you come across this term, Maya Aparita Jnana? In Bhagavad Gita, Maharaj. Yes, in the Bhagavad Gita. 
what was being described? How the, how the namam duskrit namam duskrit no moda yes yes maya pradhyana asurim bhavam ashita so what is this verse telling us what's it verse telling us the verse telling us four kinds of people who doesn't worship the lord this moda pun it's telling us four kinds of people who don't surrender to the Lord. Yes. Yes. The Lord is talking about surrender, right? And he's saying these four kinds of people don't surrender. So Prabhupada particularly picks out the Maya Aparita Jnana because they are actually educated people by material standards. They are educated. They may be scholars, they may be philosophers, they may even be scientists, but they have good material education and they don't care to surrender to Krishna. But they have maybe their own philosophy. They will have their own ideas about the, the nature of life and the purpose of life and where the world came from, all coming from their own speculations. All right, so we heard about those two kinds of people and we heard that those, which one is more dangerous? Asuram Baba Mashrita, he's the most dangerous, eh? <laughs> well, the verse was speaking about Vidya and Avidya, and it said those who engage in the cultivation of knowledge, and, and those who engage in the cultivation of nations, enter into the darkest region of ignorance. So in other words, those who are just cultivating sense gratification, they're going into the darkest region. But worse still are those engaged in the culture of knowledge because they're misleading the people. They're misleading the people, setting false, bogus philosophy, bad, bad in, in unauthorized teachings and setting a very bad standard for others. So they, they get worse, they go to uh, the, the worst places, they get more punished because they should show a better example to others. All right, we're going to go ahead to Mantra 10. Who would like to recite the verse? Somebody lead the verse, chant it and we will repeat. Uh, I will ask somebody. Okay, let's have Mr. Achuta Giri Hari Prabhu. Please read the Sanskrit and we will repeat after you, one line at a time. Anya Deva Guru Vidyaya. Anya Deva Hur Vidyaya. Nyada Hur Avidya. Nyada Hur Avidya. Iti Sushrumadhiranam Iti Sushrumadhiranam Iti Sushrumadhiranam Iti All right, you can go ahead and read the translation, Prabhu. Translation. The wise have explained that only result is derived from the culture of knowledge and that a different result is obtained from the culture of nations. All right, go ahead, read the purport a bit. Purport, as advised in the chapter 13 of Bhagavad Gita 13.8 to 12, one should culture knowledge in the following way. Number one, 
one should become a perfect gentleman and learn to give proper respect to others number 2 one should not pose himself as a religionist simply for name and fame number 3 one should not become a source of anxiety to others by the actions of his body by the thoughts of his mind or by his words number 4 one should learn forbearance even in the face of provocation from others number 5 one should learn to avoid duplicity in his dealings with others number 6 one should search out a bona fide spiritual master who can lead him gradually to the stage of spiritual realization and one must submit himself to such a spiritual master render him service and ask relevant questions number 7 in order to approach the platform of self realization one must follow the regulative principles enjoyed enjoined in the in the revealed scriptures number 8 one must be fixed in the tenets of the revealed scriptures number 9 one should completely refrain from practices which are detrimental to the interest of self realization number 10 one should not accept more than he requires for the maintenance of the body number 11 one should not falsely identify himself with the gross material body nor should one consider those who are related to his body to be his own number 12 one should always remember that as long as he has a material body he must face the mis miseries of repeated birth old age disease and death there is no use in making plans to get rid of these miseries of the material body the best course is to find out the means by which one may regain his spiritual identity number 13 one should not be attached to more than the necessities of life required for spiritual advancement number 14 one should not be more attached to wife children and home than the revealed scriptures re scriptures ordain number 15 one should not be happy or distressed over the desirables and undesirables knowing that such feelings are just created by the mind number 16 one should become an unalloyed devotee of the personality of god and shri krishna and serve him with rapt attention 17 one should develop a liking for residence in the secluded place with the calm and quiet atmosphere favorable for spiritual culture and one should avoid congested places where non devotees congregate number 18 one should become a scientist or philosopher and conduct research into spiritual knowledge recognizing that spiritual knowledge is permanent whereas material knowledge ends with the death of the body oh very good thank you. thank you very much so we see these 18 items reproduced from the bhagavad gita the actually in bhagavad gita there's 20 items there but here to put it as 18 anyway very interesting items very important it's a good idea to read them over a few times and think about how much we can cultivate them and develop these kind of qualities they're so important for all of us and it describes what is actually real knowledge because this is the the question which was asked there in the bhagavad gita 13th chapter Arjuna wanted to understand about knowledge and the object of knowledge so Lord Krishna described to Arjuna these 20 items and said these constitute knowledge you know real real knowledge is not just memorizing information but real knowledge is developing these kind of qualities 
it's a process. Real knowledge is it's a, it's a process. It's not just some mechanical uh, memorization of information, but it's applying ourselves to this process. And the beginning, if you look in the Sanskrit and in, in, in the in Bhagavad Gita, it begins with amanitvam adambitvam, humility and pridelessness. They are described by Srila Prabhupada in Bhagavad Gita. Here in Ishopanishad, he had given it a different presentation. One should become a perfect gentleman and learn to give proper respect to others. Oh, okay, so that's the first two items there actually. The, the one, number two here, one should not pose himself as a religionist simply for name and fame. Well, it might be, it might be pridelessness, not sure. Anyway, uh, if you check the Sanskrit from the Bhagavad Gita, you will see each of the items which have been listed here. Very important for us. The beginning, very first item of knowledge, humility and pridelessness, being a perfect gentleman, giving respect to others. We know from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Shikshastikam, Trinada Pisunichena, the importance of being humble and tolerant, offering respect to others. And Krishna Das Kaviraj says we should put that verse on a thread and wear it around our neck for constant remembrance. So very important point in relation to knowledge, that without being humble we haven't got a proper education. So very important. And then also of course it's important, number six, you have to search out the spiritual master. You have to have a spiritual master, it's important. Number sixteen, probably the most important item. One should become an honoroid devotee of the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, and serve him with rapt attention. Of course, that's really important for all of us. But as I say, it's a process. If in the beginning, if we're not humble in the beginning, then how will we ever cultivate these other qualities? So it's important for us to go through these different items of knowledge and think about which ways, which ones we need to cultivate more, we need to maybe give more attention to and try to develop them to improve our actual knowledge. All right, we'll like somebody to please continue reading. Uh, let me ask somebody. We have uh, maybe Mr. Aruna 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 Akesh Go Gora. Then the bad pronouns. These eighteen items combine to form a gradual process by which real knowledge can be developed. Except for these, all other methods are considered to be in the category of the science. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakura, the great Acharya, maintained that all forms of material knowledge are merely external features of the illusionary energy and that by culturing them one becomes no better than an ass. This same principle is found here in Sri Isho Upanishad. By advancement of material knowledge, modern man is simply being converted into an ass. Some materialistic politicians in spiritual guise decry the present system of civilization as satanic, but unfortunately they do not care about the culture of real knowledge as it is described in the Bhagavad Gita. Thus, they cannot change the satanic situation. Ah, thank you. So, so, 
Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur <laughs> describes Prabhupada's quoting Bhaktivinoda Thakur that this education, modern education, material knowledge makes us just like the cow or the ass, makes us into the animal. Why is this? What's the problem? Would you like to explain for us, Prabhu? Uh, the reason is because we are only uh, getting material knowledge and they do not have any spiritual knowledge. So we are just uh, with the material knowledge, the only thing which we try to do is uh, to satisfy our own senses by, uh, uh, by, by uh, making money and trying to enjoy and working hard. So, and we are just trying to be like an ass for uh, trying to get what uh, we want to survive. But we do not try to get the actual knowledge, which is spiritual knowledge, to know who is Krishna and how to love Krishna. Okay, very good. Yes, yeah, the ass is a, the, known to um, be used to carry heavy loads. Prabhupada gives an example, grass is growing everywhere. But the foolish ass thinks, if I don't carry the, the load, I won't get any grass to eat. And so the same way, modern man, we're also, we have to work like an ass to fill the belly. And we think, if I don't work, you know, how will I eat? So material knowledge just makes us more identify with the body. That's a real problem that we become more in the bodily consciousness of life by all of this material knowledge. We become more attached to eating and sleeping and we forget about the goal of life. The spiritual aspect is denied. All right, we'll go ahead. Uh, we'll have Mr. Uh, um, is it such fun? Chaitanya Prabhu? Hare Krishna Maharaj Dandotra. Hare Krishna Prabhu. In the modern society, even a boy thinks himself self-sufficient and prays no respect to elderly men. Due to the wrong type of education being imparted in our universities, boys all over the world are giving their elders headaches. Thus, Sri Ishwabhaneshwar very strongly warns that the culture of nations is different from that of knowledge. The universities are, so to speak, centers of nations, nations only. Consequently, scientists are busy discovering lethal weapons to wipe out the existence of other countries. University students today are not given instructions in the regulative principles of brahmacharya celibacy student life nor do they have any faith in the uh, scriptural injections religious principles are taught for the sake of name and fame only and not for the sake of uh, practical pra action thus there is animos animosity not only in social and the political field but in the field of religion as well. Hare Krishna. Thank you. So, the students, of course, are all over the world. They're known to be problematic. They have a lot of problems. They're often revolting and revolutions going on. I think just recently in, in Thailand, the students are a major factor in the disruptions which are going on over there. They're having uh, protests against the royalty, against the royal family, and they want to have them moved, and they're protesting against the government, and they want the government changed. And those students, they're always doing something like this. And similarly, in China, I, in China, there was a Tiananmen uprising, I think it was 19, 1994 or somewhere like that. They had the, the students campaigning 
So the, the real problem is that the students in general, although they have come for education, they become very proud of the fact that they're, they're in the university, they think they're very special. And they don't cultivate the, the, the actual quality, with the, the real sign of education is to become humble and to understand we don't know anything. But people, in the, because they're in the university, we think we know everything. And we think we know, we know so much, we think we so, know so much more than everybody else. But the real sign of education is to understand you don't know anything. Just like Lord Chaitanya was asked, why didn't he study Vedanta? And what did Lord Chaitanya say? When the Mayavadi, when Prakasananda Saraswati asked him, why don't you study Vedanta like the other sannyasis? What did Lord Chaitanya say? Yes, Dandabha pronouns. Maharaj, uh, Lord Chaitanya said, the Maya Guru Maharaj said, I am the most foolish person. I could not, I, I not understand Vedanta. So he told me just only chant and dance, that's your, that's your duty. Yes, he said, my, my spiritual master told me I am a fool. Right? And that I can't understand Vedanta. Yeah. The, I should just chant. So, this is a sign of education. Just like in Chaitanya Charitamrita, we see in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj writes, Jagai Madai Haiti Munishe Papista, Purushera Kita Haiti Munishe Lagishta. He says, I am more sinful than Jagai and Madai. I am lower than a worm in stool. And so when, when these people say it, they actually mean it. They're not just saying it to make a show, to impress people, but they actually mean it. And so, very important to understand how to present proper knowledge to people. So Prabhupada is pointing out also about how university students, they don't know anything about brahmacharya. But if a student is the other way, if he's very uh, often having relationships with women, then he's considered, oh, very, very great. He's got a big reputation. But the real purpose of student life is that students should learn brahmacharya, they should get proper training in spir for spiritual, in, as in spiritual life. And one of the reasons why there's so much divorce in the world is because the people are not trained in celibacy in the beginning of life. The young men never practiced brahmacharya and the women were never trained to be chaste. And that's why you get divorced so much. But when the man is a proper, a good brahmachari and when the woman is chaste, then when they're married, then they will live together peacefully without divorce. So these things are important. Oh. All right, so we'll, we'll go ahead. Uh, Who would like to read next? Um, maybe a manager can. Yes, okay. You want to read, Prabhu? Yeah, this is the Nationalism has developed in different parts of the world due to cultivation of nations by general people. No one considers that this tiny earth is just a lump of matter floating in immeasurable space along with many other lumps. 
In comparison to the vastness of space, these material lumps are like dust particles in the air. Because God has kindly made these lumps of matter complete in themselves, they are perfectly equipped with all necessities for floating in space. The drivers of our spaceship may be very proud of their achievements, but they do not consider the supreme driver of this greater, more gigantic spaceships called planets. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Okay. So Prabhupada is comparing the the universe to spaceships. So just as spaceships have a pilot, so he said there's, there's some intelligent beings also behind the universe controlling everything. Particles, you, lumps of matter floating in space. So, in the beginning, well, Prabhupada was speaking about nationalism and how this is developed around the world. But then he says, nobody thinks how the, this earth is just a tiny lump of matter floating in space. And this earth is one tiny planet. And even our universe is one tiny universe compared to all the universes. Our universe is very small. It is said, Brahma in our universe only has four heads, but there were many other Brahmas who had many, many heads. Some had hundreds of heads. So their universes were so big. Our universe is one of the small universes. So we're, how insignificant we are, but we're so full of ourselves, we're so confident, we're so convinced that we're great, that we know everything, that we can do everything. And so this, this creates all the problems. We have to recognize that there's the supreme intelligent being behind everything. Go ahead, Mariji, we'll have a Mariji read next. Yes, Hare Krishna. There are innumerable suns and innumerable planetary systems also, as infinitesimal. Infinitesimal. Infinitesimal parts and parcel of the Supreme Lord, we small creatures are trying to dominate these unlimited planets. Thus we take repeated birth and death and are generally frustrated by old age and disease. The span of the human life is scheduled for about the hundred years, although it is gradually decreasing to twenty or thirty years. Thanks to the culture of missiles, we old men have created their own nations within this planet in order to grasp sense enjoyment more effectively. For these few years, such foolish people draw up various plans to render national demo demarcation perfectly, the task that is totally impossible. Yet for this purpose, each and every nation has become a source of anxiety for others. More than 50% of nation's energy is devoted to defense measures and thus spoiled. No one cares for the cultivation of real knowledge. Yet people are falsely proud of being advanced in both material and spiritual knowledge. <laughs> Thank you. So, Srila Prabhupada is describing to us how People are failing to recognize the actual situation in which we are living. Uh, Prabhupada describes that we have this tiny planet, but we've divided it up into so many little nations. 
and each nation is thinking that our, this, our nation is most important, more than the other nations. And they're even getting ready to conquer and to exploit a, another nation. So they have war, you know, defense systems. And of course they spend a lot of money on defense because we, we've made all of these boundaries. We remember some time back, they had Germany divided, they had a wall right through the middle of Germany. And of course we know in the past, India was a much bigger country than it is today. Pakistan, Bangladesh, Burma, they were all part of India, Sri Lanka also, it's all become divided. And with the divisions, so much conflicts, they just become, they, they start to argue and fight with each other. And it just, there's no, this way there's no peace in the world. And we're only here, <laughs> and then Prabhupada talks about how we're only here for, for, for such a short time. Maximum life, maximum duration, 100 years, but reducing fast. So why, sh why are we taking so much trouble to make all of these divisions when we're only here for a short time? That's it. That's the foolishness of the modern society. Knowing that we're only here a short time, why bother to make so much trouble? Okay, we'll go ahead. Another marriage you can read. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhammi Pranam. Hare Krishna. Sri Isha Parishad wants us to this faulty type of education and the Bhagavad Gita gives instruction as to the development of real knowledge. This mantra states that the instructions of Vidya knowledge must be acquired from a dhira. A dhira is one who is not disturbed by material illusion. No one can be undisturbed unless he is perfectly spiritually realized, at which time one neither hankers nor laments for anything. A dhira realizes that the material body and mind he has acquired by chance through material association are but foreign elements. Therefore, he simply makes the best use of a bad bargain. Hare Krishna. So Maharaji, can you tell us where this word dhira is used in the Bhagavad Gita? Have you, do you remember that word? I know, but I don't remember the shloka Maharaj. Thank you. So maybe another lady can tell us. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, shloka number uh, 2.13. Yes, what's the verse? Yes. Can you tell me the meaning of the verse? Meaning of the verse? Yes. That uh, the soul is continuously uh, there and body changes uh, from old to, uh, sorry, youth, childhood to youth and then the there are six transformations for the body, but soul is like that only. And those who know this uh, transformation of the body and soul's presence, that person is a sober. Yeah, okay. They are the embodied soul. Persons, the embodied soul, it's, the body changes from child to youth to old age. But the self-realized soul is not bewildered, not disturbed by the change, not bewildered. Dhiras tatra namuyati, right? So one who is dhira, sometimes Prabhupada translates this word as sober-minded. Sober-minded in the sense that they're not, they don't get disturbed by the situation, by the material energy. Sometimes the material energy is giving us troubles, but they, they tolerate it. 
and they don't they don't get disturbed they, they just remain calm and steady and do their duty so that they're not disturbed so in other words such a person is actually like a, a swami or a or a goswami something like someone in the who is detached from the material world that's the idea the, the, the dira is somebody like that who is He's, he's not caught up in the material world, he's not trying to enjoy it or he's, he's not working hard trying to achieve anything here in, ma in the material sense. He's, a, he's above all that, he's free from that. So that's the kind of person who we want to actually get the real knowledge from. We want to get knowledge, you have to know who to get the knowledge from. And the, the, the person should be someone like that, who is a dira, a dira. Just like we said, when you look for the spiritual master, do you remember what was the qualification of the spiritual master, Maharaj Hare Krishna Maharaj, yes, uh, like, uh, he, is, he is not uh, attached to the material desires, not hankering for materially anything. Yes. He has realized the nature of a material body. Right. Brahmanishtam, right? Yes. Brahmanishtam. It's fixed on Brahman. So, and also he has studied. He, yeah, he studied the Vedas, scriptures. Studied the scriptures, right. He must have studied the scriptures and he's acquired the knowledge. Then he's fixed in Brahman. So that's the kind of person we want to get our education from. Someone who has uh, transcended the material energy. Nowadays you go to colleges and so on, with all the teachers smoking, drinking, you know, they don't show, and, and at the same time the teachers may say, don't smoke, very bad. But the, uh, the students laugh because they know the teacher smokes. So that kind of teaching is useless. Somebody's going to teach, you have to teach by the example. The example speaks louder than the words. Just simply giving words is... But the one who is actually dira, he's going to show the right example. And that's why we have to approach that kind of person, to get real knowledge. It's not enough just to study books. You have to approach a person. You can read the books, of course it's good, but still you have to get, you have to have some living person there who can actually teach you and guide you and show you. That's very important. All right? Oh, oh, somebody asked Prabhupada about this. He said that what's better, to sit and read the books yourself or to study from a person? And Prabhupada said, better you study from a person. He said, because the person, he will pull your ear. <laughs> Prabhupada said like that. He said, he will pull your ear. He will make you study. He will make you do it. But if you just read the books, you... You, you, may, you do it half hazard you won't take it seriously. So this is the beauty of this Bhakti Shastri course, you see, that you have to do it, you know. You have to study, you have to do this, you have to do that. You have to learn the slokas, you have to take the, the open book test, you have to, the, uh, the closed book test and write the essay. You have to do all these things. If we're just on our own, you know, we read the book and then we put it down and you know, we don't remember anything, but this way, studying together, we hope that you get a good grasp of the subject matter. So the, the first qualification was amanitvam, adamvitvam, this humility and pridelessness, very important in cultivating this kind of knowledge. Just like you come to a spiritual master, you have to surrender to him. It takes humility. You can't do it unless you're humble. 
to come in and before the spiritual master, bow down and offer obeisance. And that takes genuine humility. The students, they come in, they come into the classroom and, you know, very jovial, making noise and everything. There's no question, they don't give any respect to the teachers. Okay, we'll go ahead. We'll have another person read. Uh, let's see, let's go back to the men. Maybe we can have Mr. Uh, Anand, Anand Singha. Is it? Yes? Is he here? Yes, Mother. Please read. The material body. The material body and mind are bad bargains for the spiritual living entity. The living entity has actual functions in the living spiritual world. But this material world is dead. As long as the living spiritual sparks manipulate the dead lungs of matter, Dead world appears to be a living world. Actually, it is the living souls, the parts and parcels of the supreme living being who move the world. The dhiras have come to know all this fact by hearing them from superior authorities and have realized this knowledge by following the revelative principles. Hare Krishna. Yes. Prabhu, can you tell us, please, uh, who, who, what was the bad bargain? What, have you ever had a bad bargain before? I did, uh, did hear Maharaj bad bargain. Can you tell us what do you mean a bad bargain? What happened? Bad bargain in the material uh, platform. Yes, material platform. Uh, the, the bad bargain is that when out, instead of the real, uh, uh, real pleasure or blissful uh, knowledge, we are uh, searching for the material happiness. Uh, that that is the bad bargain I can understand, Mara. In, in reality, in real life, did you ever have a bad bargain? When you went shopping or purchased something? Yes, uh, yes, Maharaj had, had paid something more for a very cheap things, for a very cheap material. You thought you thought you were getting a good deal? Yes, uh, I thought very good deal or uh, this is the original thing but actually got a duplicate one. Mm. So when you got it, what you do with it? You have to use it, right? You have to just use it or just throw it or discard it or <laughs> just remain dissatisfied with the deal. Yeah. But, you know, you bought it so you have, you, you have, you have to use it for something. So the Prabhupada said, make the best of a bad bargain. So what was our, what, what's the bad bargain Prabhupada's talking about? Yes? What, what's the bad bargain Prabhupada's talking about here? What bad, bad, what bad bargain did we get? Yes, the, whatever the spiritual sparks we have got, by virtue of being the part and parcel of the Lord, we have to try to make these material things as a spiritual. That is, that is the good bargain of what is available in the material world. Well, the bad bargain is we got the material body. No, no, just let somebody else speak for a little while, please. Give some other devotees a chance. If I need you, I'll call on you. Can we hear from somebody who's not spoken? What is this bad bargain, the material body? Yes. Okay. Maharaj, Dhanavad Pranams. Dhanavad Pranams. Maharaj here, basically, uh, uh, bad bargain is like we got this material body. Anyway, in some time this will get to end. 
let us use to the best possible extent so that we can uh, regain our uh, eternal position yes very good yeah what 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 was the problem with the body why is the it body is some, yeah why is it one. yeah go ahead why is it a bad bargain the bad bargain is like uh, somehow or other you have put into this body now but now make use of this body to regain our internal position yeah but you didn't answer my question what's the what's the problem with this body Yeah. This is my understanding, Mara. Sorry. <laughs> okay, the body is temporary. It's subject to death. Yes. Condition. Can I stop? Conditioning. Okay. Yes. Conditioning. The senses, the senses are not under our control because if some something sometimes if I want to chant, the mind says or the or the hand or the my body will not accept to sit properly and chant the holy name. Okay. Well, if I want to read, if yeah. I want to read the scripture, uh, my mind goes somewhere, or I want to enjoy something else. To see right. my eyes. Yeah. To see something else. Yes. Good. Yeah. Uncontrolled senses, uncontrolled mind. So many problems with the body, right? A lot of, a lot of things wrong with it. Just like if you buy a car. You may think, wow, it's, you know, got a good deal, but then you, you start to find so many things wrong with it. And so, body is like this. Yes, Prabhu? Uh, but out of uh, 8.4 8 million uh, different kind of uh, possibilities, we have got a human body. So, whatever, though it is a bad bargain, but we are in human body, it means we can do devotional service. All other uh, forms cannot do the devotional service. So that is the best use of bad bargain. All right, that's very good. Yes, that's the best use of the bad bargain. The, we have a, in some ways, we're luckier than the other forms of life. Okay, the, mate the material body is a bad bargain. Living entity has actual functions in the living spiritual world, but the material world is dead. Now, this is something, can, can, have you, can you actually understand how this world is dead, a dead world? Why is it dead? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, because the material world is uh, here called as dead, because it cannot move by itself. It needs the spiritual spark to move this. So the matter is dead anyway. But since there is a spiritual spark, it moves. So here it has been defined as dead because of that. Okay. Right. Without, without the spiritual particle, nothing is going to move. What about some machine? The machine, it seems to be moving. You know, the machine's moving on its own. Right? We see so, some machines, they're running. There's no driver. How can we, is that also dead? Yes, my no, it requires uh, energy. Yes. So energy is, is from Krishna. Yeah, if there's a machine, what can we say? Do we say the machine is dead? Machine's running. It looks like it's, you know, it's alive. It's operating. But the machine is still running under a battery or a electric power. So? It is programmed, Maharaj, by the 
person who is behind it. Yeah, there has to be a person behind it, right? Machine is running, there has to be a person behind it. The same way program is something's running, there must be somebody behind it who set up the program. And that person is a spirit soul in a material body. So Prabhupada said this is a dead world. We're, we're living in this dead world. So the dead world appears to be living world. We're thinking, oh, there's so much life. <laughs> we're thinking so much life, but Prabhupada says it's a dead world. So the dearest have come to know all these facts by hearing from superior authorities. Right? The dearest, somebody may say, oh, I realized everything myself. You know, I know, who's your teacher? You ask them, who's your teacher? Oh, I realized everything myself. Oh. <laughs> so, here Prabhupada makes it very clear that you have to hear from a superior authority. Very important. All right, go ahead. Somebody read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. To follow the regulatory principle, one must take a bonafide spiritual master. The transcendent message and regulative principles come down from the spiritual master to the disciple. Such knowledge does not come in the hazardous way of time education. One can become a dhira only by submissively hearing from the bona fide spiritual master. Arjuna, for example, became a dhira by submissively hearing from the Lord Krishna, the personality of the Godhead himself. Thus, the perfect disciple must be like Arjuna and the spiritual master must be as good as the Lord himself. This is the process of learning Vidya, knowledge, from the Dira, the undisturbed addiction. Thank you so much. So to follow the regulative principles, to follow the regulative principles, one must take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. What do you think these regulative principles are? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. To support the pillars of Dharma. Okay. So could you tell us something? What are these regulative principles? Daya, Tapa, Saucha, and Satya. No meat eating, no illicit sex, no gambling, and uh, no intoxication. Well, actually, we don't need to take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master for that. The, a, any cultured, civilized society, the, those four principles will be followed. You take shelter of a spiritual master for a higher purpose. So can someone tell me what would be the, these regulative principles? It's mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna describes in the 12th, 12th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna is describing. Oh, let's ask our friend here who knows all the answers. Do you know the answer, Prabhu? What's your name? The one who generally likes to answer everything? Uttam Krishna Prabhu. Okay, so do you know the answer? What is the answer? These regulative principles which we learn from the shelter of a spiritual master? Do 
12th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, I think it's text 8, uh, Krishna is describing, first of all he describes the highest process of devotion is to think of Krishna constantly every moment. But then he says, if you can't do that, then, do you know what he says? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. The shloka which you said right now, 12th chapter 8, number shloka, it, the translation says that, just fix your mind upon me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and engage all your intelligence in me. Thus you will live in me always, without a doubt. Alright, so that's the topmost level. You know, it's very difficult to do that, right? So then, next one, he said, if you can't do that, then what are you supposed to do? Work for Krishna Maharaj. Huh? Work for Krishna. No, not yet. Some, it, that comes later, before that. Yeah. Uh, after yeah, Maharaj here, <coughs> it is uh, told, My dear Arjuna, O winner of hell, if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation, then follow regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga. Right. In this way, develop our desire to attain. Follow the regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga. Not just follow the what we call the four regulative principles, Satyam, Socham, Daya, Tapa. That is for all civilized people. But Krishna is talking here, regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga. Now that you have to learn from the shelter of a spiritual master. Without taking the shelter of the spiritual master, we won't know how to follow the regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga. Actually, th that is one of the regulative principles, one of the items of knowledge, that you have to take a spiritual master, you have to take shelter. Taking a spiritual master means you, you have to, you have, he has to train you. He has to train you in the process of bhakti yoga. And if you read the purport there, in that verse number 9, chapter 12, then Prabhupada explains, what are these regulated principles? He explains about, wake up early in the morning, take up, yeah. yes? Take bath, enter temple, offer prayers and chant Hare Krishna. Yes, and cook for the deities, offer the food to the deity, study the Srimad Bhagavatam, study the scriptures, these kind of things. This is the regulative principles which we have to learn, right? The regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga. And we learn that under the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. Of course, you may say, oh well, my spiritual master, he's got so many disciples, he can't give me personal <coughs> instruction. You don't need to have personal instruction, you can get that instruction, same instruction, through other people who have been trained. You know, there's, we have the system, just like in the school, when you have a lot of children, different ages, so the older children teach the younger children. <laughs> so the same way in our Krishna Consciousness Movement. The older devotees teach the younger devotees. So we learn in that way. So the transcendental message and regulative principles come down from the spiritual master to the disciple. The spiritual master comes in different, there's a shiksha as well as the diksha. When we understand the spiritual master, we don't just think only of the diksha, but there's also the shiksha spiritual master. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur says this is even more important 
because he's teaching us all the practical aspects of devotional service. So such knowledge does not come in the ha hazardous way of nascent education. Ha nascent education is described as hazardous. So many dangers, so many problems with nascent education. Yeah. Why, why would we say that? Why do you imagine nascent education could be dangerous? Anybody like to has hazard a guess? I said, I'm reading from the text, Prabhupada said, such knowledge does not come in the hazardous way of nascent education. So I wanted to hear from you what, why nascent education is so hazardous. What is the hazard? What is the danger in nascent education? Well, that's one point of view. Anybody else has another point of view? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. The nascent education, the, a person would not be matured enough to take decision. So, example like uh, the, uh, the uh, Shringi, uh, with, uh, in the case of uh, Parikshit Maharaj, uh, where uh, the, uh, uh, he had cursed without knowing the uh, without uh, going deep into the meaning, like you know, just because uh, the snake was put around his father's neck, the boy had cursed the father because he was not uh, fully matured enough. Yes, yeah, it's a very good example. Yes. yes, very nice example from the scriptures, that backing up the point with an example from the scriptures. Very good. Uh, yes, yeah, Sringi was a brahmana. And he had the powers of a brahmana, but he didn't know how to use them properly. And he abused, the, he made improper use of his brahminical powers by cursing Maharaj Pariksha. Yeah, very nice example. Anybody else like to offer a suggestion? Can you allow me to share one more, if you don't mind? Well, let me ask if there's any other people first. And then if we don't have any more, then we'll come back to you. Thank you. Yes, Maharajji? Maharaj, because of uh, this knowledge, they actually uh, try to master on everything and they manipulate the other living beings. I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't catch everything you said. Okay. They become very powerful. Yeah. And because of the lack of the knowledge of the Supreme, uh, they again keep on taking birth in that repetition of cycle of birth and that they cannot come out of this. So how, where, where did the nascent education come in though, in that? We wanted something, you know, the danger of nascent education. Okay, yeah. developing their bombs, <laughs> right? They always, they always have some wonderful technology to go and bomb the places. 
So very, very good in uh, destroying, but not very good in protecting and maintaining. We can see how much damage we've done to the world. You know, all the snow, pe the snow peaks have melted, the ice, the, the, the global warming problems and the ocean getting bigger, the sea level rising, the rivers drying up, the pollution. We've done so many bad things and, and we're proud we can make some bombs, we can, we can destroy. All we can do is destroy, all we do is damage. We don't do any good for the world. And so this is, a, this is nascent education simply creating so many problems, the air we breathe, all the... They, yes? I think they are advancing in technology, but they are degraded more. Yes, right. And, you know, they're offering us this, you know, the, the crops they produce nowadays also, all the grains and so on. They're all full of so many chemicals and insecticides and this oxide and that oxide. There's no, nutri there's no natural nutrition anymore. In the past, people could build wonderful things like, you know, in Egypt you have the pyramids and in, in the great, in, in, and the Sphinx and in China you have the Great Wall. But what do we have today? You know, we put up these skyscraper buildings and they're ugly, they're horrible. <laughs> All right, so one can become a dira only by submissively hearing from a bona fide spiritual master, very important. You have to hear from the Guru. And Prabhupada gives an example, just like Arjuna became Dira by hearing from Krishna. And then he says, yes? Oh, Pr Prabhu, you were going to give us your example? Yeah, you wanted to say something? His Sri uh, Srimad Swachulupas Goswami was in his uh, Purvasram, he was a teacher. Correct? Who? So, so uh, his Sri uh, Srimad Swachulupas Goswami was. Bhakti Swarup Damodar? No, uh, no, not Bhakti Swarup Damodar. Uh, in American body. Uh, I think Swachulupas Goswami was, he was previous, uh, before Kampri School, he was a teacher. So, he came, he was teacher and very learned person. He came to Prabhupada. And he started discussing about Shastra, he doesn't know anything. And by the mercy of Prabhupada, means as a guru, then he became a dhira and he know, he come to know and then he became a very learned scholar Brahmana. I think Patrubda Goswami Maharaj himself. Bhakti Swarup Damodar. Bhakti Swarup Damodar Swami was he was a scientist, no? Yeah, he was a scientist. He was a scientist. From Manipur. Yes, right. Yeah. A couple of years before he left the body. Yeah, and yeah. also one more, one more incident I remember, it was His Holiness, uh, uh, Sitrimad uh, Rathanath Swami Maharaj, he was coming from Vindavan, he will come to uh, Bombay. On the way he was in Delhi airport, so in the sitting in the airport and Maharaj was very exhausted with his filthiness. So that time environmental minister, somebody came to Maharaj and said that environmental minister wants to see you. So this is practical example. So Maharaj said, okay, since it is an environmental minister uh, invited, so Maharaj went in the airport itself. So then she said, what you Swami and all you people are doing for the society, sitting in the ashram and doing? He said, not sitting on the ashram, this is what you have done the environment. So Maharaj said, okay, if you want to do real, if you want to save the environment, or if you want to do real jnana from Srimad Bhagavad Gita, do yogna. So when you do perform yogna in the name of Vishnu, you are offering like what the ghee into the, uh, from that give tons of oxygen get uh, generated. So Maharaj has given many other things as well. So even a uh, very learned uh, environmental minister, she realized that other than the scripture, many things which is materially they do not know. And she accepted and later she uh, invited even uh, Sri Srimad Radha Swami Maharaj in environmental ministry. 
for give his lecture. So this how this material, uh, materialistic people, when they hear from a real guru, uh, Krishna's uh, uh, devotee, like Arjuna, so then uh, progress will be there slowly into the society. Okay, thank you very much. So we're hearing about the importance of hearing from Adira and Krishna is the perfect spiritual master and Arjuna is the perfect disciple. And sometimes people say, I want a guru like Krishna. So the guru will say to the, the, the person, and I want a disciple like Arjuna. <laughs> right? You want the perfect guru, you should be a perfect disciple. This is the process, anyway, of hearing vidya, getting knowledge from the undisturbed. We'll go ahead. Next person, someone read this last paragraph. Yes, Mataji, go ahead. Okay, so at the Adira he hasn't undergone any training. So he may be educated materially, but he's not heard from the bona fide authority. So he cannot be an instructive leader. So then Prabhupada talks, turns to politicians. because the politicians often take advantage of the re religious sentiment of the people and they will try to pose themselves as being diras, but they're not, they're actually the opposite. So very dangerous. They're simply busy seeing to their own remuneration. <laughs> they want the money, they're interested in the money. So this is, a, this is a problem. And sometimes people also they may criticize devotees even like that, that you only want the money. So we have to be very conscious of that, that we want to preach, we want to give people Krishna consciousness. Our real business is to give them spiritual knowledge, not to let them rot in the material world but to save them from this material world by giving them enlightenment, by giving them some Krishna consciousness, bringing them out of the ignorance, out of the maya. This is the business of a devotee. Full of compassion for the fallen conditioned souls. All right, so one result is obtained by cultivating knowledge a different result is obtained by cultivating nations. Where will you go to cultivate nations, do you think? Where will people go? Give me, give me. Universities, the present uh, academic education. Yes, right. You get your, go to college, go to university, academic education. People spend a lot of money on education, right? They, they get loans and people endeavor like anything to get these places, to get into a good school, to get a good, ed, a good college degree. People think it means so much to them. But they don't learn anything about spiritual education. They just become more, in, I, they, their identif identification with the body becomes stronger because of their 
contact with the cultivation of nations. So the result of cultivating nations, what's the result? Yeah, very good. Yeah, very good. Right. They'll stay in the wheel of birth and death. They're not going to get out of this material world. They may go up, they may go down, they can go up and down, back and forth. But if we cultivate the spiritual knowledge, cultivate spiritual knowledge, that's certainly for our improvement. And what will be the sign? What, what will happen? in the cultivation of spiritual knowledge. What's the first thing, the first quality? To become humble, Maharaj, to become humble. Right. Humble. We, are, we train devotees to offer all respect to others. Very important. Offering all respects to others and not expecting any respect for ourselves. Tolerant, like a tree. Having ego, what, what should our ego be like? Yes, but so the ego, how should I, what, what about the ego? We should think we are not the body, but we are servants of the Lord, not the masters. Right, we should think we're not the body. So we're not the body, what are we? We are the soul. So what is the size of the soul? Insignificant. You don't know the actual size? Size, uh, it is one by 10,000 uh, part of the tip of the hair. Right? Yes, right. One ten thousandth the tip of the hair. So our ego should be in proportion to the soul. <laughs> right? <laughs> We should, we should have that kind of ego. But our ego is more in proportion to the body. We're thinking I'm five foot eight or I'm six feet, whatever. This is the problem. We still identify with the body. We have to give up this identification with the body. And we give up this attachment to the body by cultivating spiritual knowledge by following the path of bhakti as instructed under the direction of the spiritual master. And then the result is, as we said, text number 16, one should become an unalloyed devotee of the Personality of Godhead and serve him with rapt attention. All right, are there any other quest points on this verse? Any questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. I have one, one question on this, the last point you were mentioning about the size of the soul. Yes. After Pratyateshwara Upanishad talks about that and Prabhupada gives a reference of that. But there are many places in this. Uh, it is a formula, it is said in Bhagavad Gita 2.14, 2.17 and many places it is explained as the form, uh, as a one which is called no, I infinite. It, it does not give the impression that it has got a form. But to Sotate Shura Mubhanish say that, that there is a form. Now to one by ten the same to say that it is saying that. But which one we should be taking? But Bhagavad Gita does not technically say that it has a form. But Prabhupada gives a reference of Sutta Krishna to the revelation in that purpose, one of the purposes. So how how should we take it? By definition, it has got no form. That's my answer. Well, how do you... well, the spirit soul itself, well, when it's con here in the material world. It has the potential of form, 
it may not have man it's not we haven't the, the soul hasn't manifested its full potential because the soul is in the material body and it's with in the company of the super soul and they're both the soul and super soul are in the hearts of the living entity so but when the soul is liberated from the material existence then the soul can manifest its proper form then the actual form of the soul will manifest from that spiritual particle the spiritual particle very small infinitesimal one ten thousandth the tip of the hair but it has the potential to manifest the form and when, it's, when it enters into the spiritual world, then that spiritual form manifests. And that's how we can have a relationship with the Lord. In five, there are five different rasas. So it, we understand the, the, the soul in that way. We have, the, we have our material form, just like this material form. Where did this material form come from? The creation comes about from subtle to gross, right? The beginning of the creation is subtle. The finest element is ether. And from the ether comes the air. Then from the air comes, what's the next one? Water. Fire. Fire. Then yeah. water to me. Yes, like that. From, from subtle to gross. So the same way we come into this world, we have, we have the desires, we have the subtle body. What is it which creates this body? It's our mind which comes along with the soul, the subtle body comes along with the mind, uh, along with the soul at the time of death, the subtle body leaves with the soul and the subtle body carries our desires which arrange for another body. It's this, the subtle desires which become manifest in the form of a body. Isn't it? Yes, yes. So from the subtle stage, the physical form. In, in the spiritual world, however, everything spiritual. So the, the spiritual particle enters there into the spiritual world and manifests its spiritual form on entering into the spiritual sky, the spiritual planet, then our spiritual body manifests. Because we carry within our spirit, within that spirit soul particle, there is also the subtle form, the, the desire to serve Krishna in a particular way. That when you go back to Godhead, you know, you, we have a particular desire to serve Krishna in a particular man, and that will arrange for us to get a particular body. You can read, if you read Brehad Bhagavat Amrita, you can read about Gop Kumar, how he goes to Vaikuntha and how he meets the residents of Vaikuntha and what they're doing, what kind of bodies they have, what's happening there. And you can read about Gop Kumar, how he travels in the different places in the universe, how he goes to the region of liberation, Sayuja Mukti. Very interesting because Sanatana Goswami is revealing to us the nature of the existence in all of these different regions throughout the universe and beyond the universe as well. Any other question or comment? 
on this. All right, so the significant word in this verse, susushruma, huh? susushruma, meaning, susushruma means hearing. And who to hear from? How is he? How is he described? What was the particular quality mentioned? In the yeah. Dira. Dira. Yes, Dira. He's Dira. One. Who, you must hear from the person who is Dira. Dira means. Yes, but the meaning Prabhupada uses? Sober. Sober. Sober, right? We think somebody's sober, he's not drunk, <laughs> right? Somebody's, somebody's intoxicated, he's been drinking. Some, oh, he's, he's not drunk today, he's sober today. So sober. And sober minded in the sense they're not they're not disturbed by the ups and downs, by all the disturbances going on in the world. They keep the mind control. Just like nectar of instruction. The it can one who can tolerate the urge to speak, the mind's demands, actions of anger, the urges of the tongue, belly, gen like that. That is like Dira also. Or from Bhagavad Gita, the changing body. Komaram Yovanam Jara. It's not disturbed. Some people get very disturbed. They see their hair start falling out. Oh, they get so disturbed. Oh, the hair's going grey. Oh, I'm putting on weight. You know, they get so, people get really disturbed. Oh, I'm getting old, I'm dying, oh. But one who is dira is undisturbed. So that's a person who is meant to guide us, meant to teach us, we're meant to hear from him. We have to seek out, search out that person and hear from them. Prabhupada said, hear from them for one year. Then that way we can be convinced. All right, any other questions, comment?